Good. So welcome everyone. Let's let's get started. We first have um, Jan Andrea Inkov from um, where are you? Ah, so from Karlsruhe. Sorry. Who will talk us about superconductivity in SYK? Uh, please go ahead. Yeah. Thanks for the introduction and thank you for being here today. Uh, I'm gonna talk about superconductivity in SYK models. And this is an ongoing project in collaboration with my PhD supervisor, Georg Schmalian, and with Konrad Skalm. Well, the main goal of this talk will be to introduce a model for those superconductors that don't have a, a fermi liquid normal state. And well, uh, these systems are uh, interesting because they cannot be uh, explained through the conventional methods to address superconductivities. And in this talk, uh, we will mainly based on uh, uh, the SYK model, but in the end, I will also give some holographic uh, argumentation. So my talk is organized as follows. In the first part, I will briefly review what an SYK model is. In the second part, I will introduce a slight modification of the SYK model for uh, the physics of fermion and phonon. And then I will generalize it to higher dimensions. And in the conclusion, I will give also some holographic perspective. So let's start uh, with the SYK model. Uh, an SYK model is a zero plus one dimensional model for interactions among Q fermions, in this example, Q is equals four, among N fermionic modes. And this can be either thought of an interaction between the orbitals or the energy levels of an atom, or if you want, if you prefer, as uh, an interaction between the sides of the quantum dot. In the original work, uh, the fermions are Majorana fermions, but uh, here we consider uh, charged fermions so that we can also do thermodynamics in the conserved charge of the fermions. Importantly, uh, the, the coupling constants here are random numbers. So they are extracted from a Gaussian distribution with a, a conventionally zero mean. And with second moment, which is controlled by this parameter here, which has the dimensions of energy. Importantly, uh, SYK models exhibit some uh, properties of the non-Fermi liquid physics on one hand, and on the other, they are solvable in uh, the limit of a uh, large number of fermionic flavors. So, we have a toy model which is controllable and which has some properties of the non fermi liquid physics. So how do we tackle SYK models? We have essentially two ways. We can either uh, choose the diagram expansion or choose the variational approach. We're gonna follow mainly the second method uh, because also because we can make more direct contact to holography. But at the end of the day, we are interested in thermodynamics and thermodynamics is generated by the log of partition function. And at the te technical level, since we have to make disorder averages, um, we will have to, to make averages of log terms, which is not an easy task. So uh, we can replace log of the partition function with powers of the partition function um, through this simple mathematical identity, which is called a uh, replica trick, the price to pay here is that we have to introduce a number of copies of the system, as you can see in this figure. And so at the technical level, we will have to introduce an additional label, flavor label, which represents, which labels the, the replica we are working in. So um, after performing the disorder averages and integrating out the fermions, we end up with an effective action, which is functional of this funny B local fields. The G fields is, is a collective field, which is defined in terms of the fermions in this way, while uh, the sigma field appearing here is its own Lagrange multiplier. They are matrices both in uh, the imaginary time subspace and also in the replica subspace. 
as you can see here in effective action, there is an overall factor of N. This means that for large N, we can perform a settled point approximation. And beautifully, the settled point equations, which are shown here, coincide with the Dyson equation that we obtain with the diagram approach. So on the settled, we can interpret these bilocal fields as the fermionic propagator and as the fermionic self-energy. Uh, it is really interesting to see what happens at low energy because the theory develops some emergent symmetries. More precisely, if uh, we can uh, reparameterize the time and we, we can multiply our function by, by a phase factor and mm, the action, or if you want the equations of motion won't change. However, a careful analysis of the settled point, uh, which can be done in the infrared limit, reveals that the settled point itself is not invariant under these symmetries. And so these symmetries are spontaneously broken. It has been shown that the action, the effective action of the goldstones arising due to this spontaneous symmetry breaking is given by this expression here, where uh, the time derivative of the phase field is conjugate to density fluctuations of the model, while the re time derivatives of these epsilon modes uh, is conjugate to energy fluctuations. While the coefficient uh, standing um, up from the first integral uh, is the charge compressibility, while the gamma here is the specific heat. So this object here has a clear thermodynamical interpretation. Let me also mention that by embedding this model in higher dimensions, uh, it has been shown to display uh, other non-fermi liquid um, behaviors such as the linear resistivity over broad temperature range. So um, since I'm moving to the second part, I ask you whether you have questions so far. Okay, so feel free to interrupt me whenever you want, of course. Let's, um, uh, let's uh, move to the superconductivity uh, story. So at a technical level, we would like a model which is able not only to have this local field here, but also uh, to involve combinations involving products like CC or C dagger, C dagger which will be responsible for superconducting behavior. This has been done in a number of ways. For example, by putting attraction, uh, attractive term in the Hamiltonian uh, among fermions, of course. But the way we do this today is by considering a version of the um, phonon uh, mediated uh, superconductivity, uh, but SYK. So here we have the, we, we take a model with this interaction between two fermions and a phonon, but a coupling constant is SYK. So it is drawn from a, from a random distribution. It turns out that uh, while computing the disorder average, so while getting the effective theory of the model, this combination of fields uh, is important. And well, we can distinguish two cases. If we extract the coupling constant from a unitary ensemble, we end up with this kind of exponent, O dagger O, which turns out not to yield to the desired anomalous combination. While if we extract uh, the coupling constant from an orthogonal ensemble, we end up with this uh, combination, which is able to yield this kind of uh, anomalous terms. Indeed, the effective action that the authors found uh, is this expression here. It's a bit uh, more complicated, but it's just an extension of the effective action of the SYK dot we saw before. There is a part which is responsible for the phonon dynamics. And here, as you can see, there is a part uh, with, the, with the physics of the anomalous propagator and anomalous self-energies. And uh, the authors also, by studying the equations of motion of this model, 
also drawn this beautiful phase diagram uh, for the temperature against the coupling constant and they found the, that they studied carefully the um, phase the phases that the system can enter so now we would like to test superconductivity and in order to test superconductivity we have to check whether our system is a perfect conductor um, and whether is it, it is able to expel the the magnetic field from its interior but in order to address such questions, we need spatial dimensions in our model. So, and once we have spatial dimensions, we uh, decide to test superconductivity by analyzing this special correlation function, which just correlates the density current with an external vector potential. Why? Well, because both the electrical conductivity and the magnetic field are affected or can be expressed, if you want, in terms of longitudinal and transverse component of, of the kernel K. Well, in particular, uh, when the longitudinal component is non-vanishing for small frequencies and small momenta, then we will have a perfect conductor, a, a finite through the weight, if you want. And instead, when the transverse component vanishes faster than Q squared, then the magnetic field turns out to be expelled from the interior of the sample. So let's do this. But first, we have to embed the system in higher dimensions. So we have to put our phonon fermion dot on a lattice. And the way we couple the lattice is through uh, an SYK2 hopping term. So we have a quadratic term. Uh, which let the fermions uh, travel around the system. And again, as within the dot physics, um, it is important to distinguish between the real coupling constant case and the complex coupling constant case, because only in the first case, we will, we will have superconductivity. And by repeating, by applying the machinery I explained before, so the, um, disorder, average, replica trick, and so on, we end up with this effective action whose first contribution is just the on-site contribution, and the second part is purely hoping. In, in the, here you find, you, you can see T0, which controls again the second moment of the distribution. Okay, now we are interested in the charge physics. So we perform an, um, fluctuations around, around the saddle points of the, of the previous model. And we do this, as I said before, by acting uh, on the saddle points through a U1 transformation. This is for the fermionic field, this is for the anomalous propagator, and these are for the respective uh, self-energies degrees of freedom. Then we make an expansion for small phi, and we end up with this effective action for the charge mode. Well, uh, all of the functions involved here um, are defined in terms of just on the, the propagators at the saddle point. While this function L appearing here uh, will play an important role in a couple of slides. But now, See, we, we have this effective action, and now we just have to switch on an external vector potential. And this can be done uh, with the so-called pair substitution, which is uh, transformations of the fermions. And we just have to map the fermions into this, with this phase factor involving the vector potential. And th these prescriptions allows to switch on an external, to embed the system in an external vector potential. And it turns out that uh, by doing the computations, uh, this map here uh, translates at the level of the phase mode in this way. So we just have to, to, to shift the phase mode uh, by a factor of the vector potential. So we simply apply this map uh, to, the previous, um, to the previous effective action, and we find the effective action for uh, the theory within, in an external vector potential. 
And now it's just a matter of computation because uh, the partition function of the model is defined as a path integral over, over the field phi. And we can get the kernel K uh, by differ differentiating two times uh, the, this, this expression here. And so the longitudinal and the transverse component of the kernel K are given by this expression here. Now we are able to apply our criteria. So we have to see how the longitudinal and transverse component behave for low frequency and low momentum. And we see here that in both the cases, they are proportional to the uh, zero frequency value of the L function, which appeared before in the charge effective action. And yeah, you can see here more explicitly the expression of the function. And as you can see, it is proportional to a combination of the anomalous propagator. So, uh, which are finite only when the, the, the hopping terms are real. So only when we are in the superconducting state. So since we found that uh, the longitudinal and transverse component are finite in the superconducting state, then our superconductor is well behaved. So it is able to expel magnetic field and is a perfect conductor. So now I would like just to tell something about holography. John, uh, can I interrupt before you move on to holography? Sure. I, got, I got a little lost. Okay. So you have your SYK fermions on each SYK dot. Yep. Now the phonons, where do they live? On on the lattice sites of your SYK2, or do they are they defined on the each of the dots? Yeah, they don't move the phonon. They they are just in the dot, and we let only the fermion uh, travel uh, around. So so if the phonons are also defined on each dot, yeah. Why do you so so they so just to be clear, they're defined on the lattice sites of you know the, this all to all interaction or. or you know, four fermion interaction. So, so if you already have that, what, why do you need to go to a higher dimensional version? Wait, uh, so we don't have a four fermion interaction. Now we, we have introduced another kind of dot. This is a dot which um, we have a bunch of fermions and of phonons. Oh, good, okay, so, so, okay, <laughs> thanks. But, just... but then wh why do you need to go to higher dimensions to see superconductivity? Don't you already see that on each dot? Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Uh, indeed, the, the, the main finding of the zero plus one dimensional paper is this fine, uh, phase diagram where they observe superconductivity. But, well, in order to, uh, to, to then um, to, to, to make sense, we need a special, special dimension. Well, uh, if, we, if we want to make transport in these systems, okay. Uh, we, we need to embed the system in higher dimension, right? But to see the instability is sufficient to work within the dot. But then, so, so then when you extend to higher dimensions, what you do is you're not doing like in some of these previous SYK transport papers where they consider two types of fermions. There are the, there are the fermions that are defined on this, each SYK dot. And then they also add conduction fermions, which are the actual fermions that can hop from one side to, to the other and they interact with the fermions on each dot. Right. Here, you make the SYK fermions on each dot hop. Yeah, so there are, uh, you're right, there is a variety of ways of doing this. Uh, people uh, can distinguish between conduction and valence uh, fermions and that, that's what you said. But uh, there, there are also four um, quartic hopping terms, for example, or in the paper of Son and Balance, they use this SYK2 hopping term as well. Okay. And they observe the crossover between a low temperature heavy Fermi liquid uh, phase to a higher temperature incoherent regime. So yeah, the, the, there is a variety of ways to do this. We, we just do quadratic hoping term. Okay, and T here is not a random is, coupling. It is a random, yeah, yeah, of course. It, it is, is a random coupling. Yeah. And it has to be random? No, I mean, that's another good point. Um, 
at a technical level, in order to be able to have this piece here with the local fields, we need to make this order average also on the t-hopping term. But it is perf perfectly legal also to consider non-random um, non variables. And that's, um, th that's important if you want to see a band structure in the model. So there are a couple of papers where they consider both the cases. So uh, they consider also non-random hopping term in order to see, the, to see a band structure. Otherwise, uh, these models are suitable for those systems with, with bands that are essentially flat. Okay, thanks. Okay. Now Thank I have you. a clearer picture of what you were doing. Thanks. Okay, right, so holography. Um, as you might know, uh, SYK models and uh, extreme riser north from black holes share some similarities, more than some. Um, they are black hole solutions that flows from an ADS D plus two ultraviolet factor, and they have an emergent ADS two factor near the horizon. So this signals the presence of the dual of a dual conformal field theory in one dimension which is precisely what happens in the SYK model, as we saw before, in the low energy limit, there is this emergent uh, reparameterization invariance, which in one dimension is, is just the conformal invariance. So if we want to derive SYK from holography, we have basically uh, to follow two steps. The first one, we have to dimensionally reduce the theory down to two dimensions while the second thing we have to do is to cut off the geometry at a certain energy scale to keep just the universal ADS2 or at worst near ADS2 physics. So the dimensional reduction is, uh, can be done by constraining the metric tensor to this n sets here, where phi is called the dilaton. If you want, plays the role of the spatial um, radius uh, as we flow. Uh, towards the holographic direction. Uh, constant dilaton probes the red area here, the, the near uh, horizon area, while allowing a small variation on, in the dilaton, we get the near ADS2 geometry. And so one ends up with uh, an action for uh, gravity and dilaton, which is often called JT gravity action. Now, as I said, the second step that you have to follow is we have to cut off the geometry at a certain energy scale that in the dilaton language uh, means that we have to expand the above mentioned action uh, at linear order in the dilaton. Um, in the hyperbolic coordinates, an ADS2 factor is just a compact disk, but since we have to deal with cutoff version of uh, this ADS2, we will have a, um, a symmetry breaking again here, because the, the solution to the equations of motion are not the usual ADS2, but cutoff version. And this cutoff version is invariant only under translations within the disk and rotations. And one can work out the effective action of, um, of the boundary curve and find a result which is exactly the same as the SYK result. One can also derive the charge uh, mode action here. So uh, the idea, and I want to underline that that's work in progress, but the idea is to apply the same machinery to another object which uh, we know can superconduct, uh, which is Abelian Higgs model. Uh, when the matter field is switched off, the Reisner Nordstrom is a solution to this model but we can trigger a superconducting instability for appropriate choice of the mass and the, the charge parameters. So we know that in a certain parameter regions, the, 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 the black hole develops a hair, which is dual to the order parameter in the dual field theory. So the conjecture here is that the infrared geometry of such black holes solution um, is dual to the infrared geometry of the superconducting SYK model we saw before. What we have done so far is to dimensionally reduce the Higgs abelian model and to perform a stability analysis uh, in this reduced theory. 
uh, as usual, one, one maps uh, the scalar equations of motion into a Schrodinger problem for zero modes and plot the potential. And we see that for negative enough squared mass and, and, and large uh, charge, the potential develops a well. And so uh, with this choice of parameters, the system of equation, the, this equation of motion uh, is probably admits a solution, but we have to check. Another um, application of this two-dimensional theory is to the following phase diagram, which was found in this paper here. And it is just a slightly uh, generalization of um, the SYK phonon fermion dot zero plus one dimensions here. But they consider also an additional parameter alpha, which is called the pair breaking parameter. Uh, and we see that in a, in a range of values, the system is not able to superconduct, while below a certain critical value, uh, this, the system enters a superconducting state. And one uh, interesting behavior is that close to this quantum critical point, uh, we have a, the so-called BKT scaling, which has this, this expression here. So our hope is that we can derive the very same behavior, but from holography. So now uh, to conclude and to sum up, we have extended to higher dimensions the phonon fermion dot and through the analysis of the kernel K, that correlation function, we saw that the superconductor is well behaved, namely it has a finite through the weight and can expel the magnetic field. It would be interesting to further um, investigate the numerics uh, of the equation, the, the numerical solution to the equations of motion of that model to see, for example, how uh, the, the critical temperature gets affected from the hopping physics. Instead, from the holographic side, the ideal goal would be to derive the same effective actions from bo both the sides. In minor task, we would like to derive the BKT scaling from holography. And also, uh, another thing that uh, could be tested is the superconducting stiffness again from holography. And for this, we should do a reduction not on a sphere, but constraining the spatial dimension on the torus and then switching on a magnetic field in, in the inside of the torus and to see how the, the model responds. And with this, I would like to thank you for your attention. Thanks, Jan Andrea. Uh, let's have uh, questions. So we already have some, but. <clears throat> Comments? Okay. If no one wants to go, I can go. go yeah. uh, Jan. Yes. Wouldn't you want some kind of ADS2 in your holographic superconductor in order to ever be able to match this to SYK? Yeah, right. But the... well, the action that you wrote, it, it won't have ADS2 in the IR. Yeah, but yeah, in Derby, should the engineer uh, uh, low temperature, so the, the, the real aim at the end of the day is this quantum critical point here. Which yeah, is right. But, right, but low temperature. And um, we work in the vicinity of the phase transition where the psi field is, is small, and then also its back reaction uh, is small on the geometry. So it's this gives us hope to to see such kind of behavior but this is a bit okay um i can send you some references but uh i mean you can find holographic superfluids with ads to horizons but it's a bit tricky and a bit it's a bit fine-tuned mm -hmm. because yep. as you say your, your your scalar couplings they need to obey very specific conditions so that the psi field does not back react strongly yeah. on the geometry in the zero temperature limit. So they act like, as in, like an irrelevant deformation. Yeah. And it, yeah. it typically doesn't want to do that. Mm -hmm. So that's why you have to fine tune the system a bit. Yeah. Yeah, thanks. If you can send me ref, uh, they are very welcome. Yeah, yeah, yeah but you're right. Uh, the, the 
um, I mean, we don't hope to have a full description of uh, the superconducting state, but at least close to the phase transition, we should be able to, to, to get something. But, but you still need to do something non-trivial because if you were just looking at, say, Rice and Nordstrom, mm -hmm. the, the scalar is not going to be small unless you're in some kind of problem. It, no. or, or, or you you impose a non-trivial, you need to do something non-trivial to your gravity action such that you bring TC to very small values yeah. so that the superconducting transition happens in the ADS2 cos R2 region. But bless, Based isn't time. this that exactly what happens if the charge is zero when the scalar condenses? Ah, but then it's not a super. But then you don't have ADS2 cos R2, right? Well, before it condenses, you, you do have ADS2. But, but I think they want to, to still have ADS2 cos R2 after the scalar has condensed. Yeah. That, if, so, but if you are in very- No, that's, uh, that's, that's not correct. We do, you know that the IR is not, the, the ultra, the final IR is not going to be ADS2 cross R2. In, in the reduced region, this, the model that should map to the SYK model should somewhere or another have a UV that's ADS2-ish, but not an IR. The IR is the condensed state. Anyway, so this, this is Janice, that you, you, you can always... you, You've hit the right note, Blaz. This is the puzzle to solve. So. Well, what I was trying to say is that you, you can you can cook up some models where the IR itself is ADS2, even yeah, in the presence why, why, of a condensate. Why would you want to do that? There's no, ex there's no expectation that the, um, uh, the SYK superconductor has a, in some way or another, has, should map to an ADS2. It, it has no conformal invariance. Okay, then maybe that's my confusion. I thought you had this effective action of the reparameterization re mode plus charge mode. That but was told. It, it's broken in the. In the. Okay, then then I got confused yeah. along the talk. So so you so you're right. So it's it, there's like from holography some intermediate scale, but from the, even from the SYK model, it's some intermediate scale, where um, you have this theory with reparameterization variance, where the the solution breaks it. So so then maybe ask let, let me ask the question slightly differently. <laughs> Well, what's the effective action in the SYK superconducting state? And, and what, what are you going to use as benchmarks in order to compare to holography? That's an excellent question. Okay, good. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Can I ask a question, uh, Jörg Schmalian here? Hi, Jörg. Yes, yes, please go ahead. Uh, I, hi, hi, Blaise. I actually wanted to ask, I mean, uh, a comment or a question to Blaise. I have no problem whatsoever that you have to fine tune it because you actually have to fine tune it to be at a quantum critical point. So if you have simultaneously an infinitesimal pairing field that you want to condense, on the other hand, you still want to go as far as possible into the uh, in, into an, uh, an ADS2 cross R, whatever, uh, then you should in fact have to fine tune it. My question is how do you fine tune it to get to such a point? Okay. Yeah, it's a good question. I mean, we, we could talk about this, but maybe let, yeah, but the, let, let's not hijack the. Yeah. Let's not. Good. Uh, I also know the answer to this, Jörg. But, uh, I mean, we're happy to Thanks. have an asymptotic to ABS solution before the conden before the scale before the, the condensation happens. Then it's easy, no? Exactly. Yeah. But but I want to have the fine tuned point at t equals zero. Yeah, so you, need, you need to add a lambda psi to the fourth term in this action that's on the screen. Right. Okay. And then it's a combination of tuning Q, M squared, and the and the coupling lambda. Wonderful. Okay. Good. Maybe. I mean, you know that to make TC very small. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, you do. You yeah. There's no more comments about this. Maybe you can answer the question that was asked in the talk, in the, sorry, in the chat about the number of, whether the number of phonons is equal to the number of fermions. It's long ago, I don't know. It is equal. Sorry? It is equal in this computation. Okay, I don't know if, yeah, if the, if the person who had Omid if is still there, if he wants to. Okay. Let me just read the question. So, yeah, that, that was the question, actually. 
uh, I wanted to see that if the number of uh, bosons in the computation is equal to the number of yeah, fermions or. It is. Okay, thanks. Any more questions? <clears throat> okay. So thank you, Jan Andrea, again. Very nice talk. Um,